For months, the San Diego Sheriff's Department has been dealing with the fallout of a scathing state audit, shining a light on how many inmates have died in San Diego jails. Good evening, I'm Derek Stahl. And I'm Kimberly Hunt. And even before that report was released, ABC 10 News investigative reporter Jennifer Kastner was pressing the department for details about the surge in suspected fentanyl overdoses behind bars. She is joining us now to discuss what she found and some of the roadblocks you ran into, Jennifer. Yeah, Kimberly, Derek, this hasn't been easy. We started asking questions seven months ago, like how are these inmates getting drugs into the jails? Why hasn't the problem been stopped already? So we filed public records requests for details about the cases twice. Both times the sheriff's department denied us access. You're looking at a stack of requests about our county inmates who've overdosed on what was suspected to be fentanyl. They date back to the early days of the pandemic. There were seven inmates at George Bailey Detention Center who OD'd but survived. Others were less fortunate, like 41-year-old Omar Hassanin, 41-year-old Jerry Ailman, and 35-year-old Robert Whitlock, who all died at the same jail. There was also 31-year-old Adam Roger and 24-year-old Ronaldino Estrada, who died at the Vista Jail. And at the Central Jail downtown, there was 35-year-old Blake Wilson and 22-year-old Saxon Rodriguez. His death was 100% preventable. Sabrina Weddle is his sister. She wore this shirt to our studio. San Diego sheriffs let my brother Saxon Rodriguez die on 7 2021 at the San Diego County Jail. I want justice. Saxon had been arrested while homeless and died of a suspected fentanyl overdose four days after he was booked into jail. Do you think your brother would have been safer on the streets than in jail? He'd probably be alive. We asked the Sheriff's Department for the investigation findings for his case and the other overdose cases. The reply we got over and over, the Sheriff's Department is denying your request. That's because the department claims that certain investigatory records are exempt from disclosure because of California law. We were also denied in part because of patient privacy laws. So we went to the medical examiner to see if the autopsy reports would help us learn more. For each inmate who died, naloxone was given. That's the rapid opioid reversal medication. Fentanyl was confirmed to be in their systems. But how they got the drugs in the first place was unclear. A lot of this is a story about addiction, honestly. In March, ABC 10 News sat down with then acting Sheriff Kelly Martinez. There's a lot of ways they're coming in. People body pack them. They secrete them in all kinds of different parts of their bodies. So we've had people who uh, will put small amounts and tape it inside their belly button. We find them uh, sewn into the clothing. She listed off the measures taken to keep drugs out. Everybody who comes in through intake stands in front of or goes through a body scanning process. There are also detailed private x-rays, pat downs, canine surprise checks, male screenings, safety videos and naloxone carried on every deputy. So right now we don't have a screening process for employees other than, you know, watching what everybody's doing and, you know, they go through the same entry points and things like that. I'm taking you at your word for saying that these drugs are getting in because inmates are smuggling them in, but I, I can't get any proof of that in any sort of documents mm -hmm. from the jails or from the sheriff's department. Why is that? I don't know the specific cases you're looking at, but I'm, you know, we can look at them after. We were told to resubmit our requests, which the department's legal team reviewed. We got denied a second time. I believe the San Diego sheriffs are at fault. Weddle says inmates are coming in with drug problems, making them especially vulnerable and they deserve extra care. I understand mistakes happen, but be people are losing their lives. It's a very difficult problem. I, I don't have all of the solutions. We're working very hard to prevent it. In February, a state audit revealed that the sheriff's department had failed to adequately prevent inmate deaths. The sheriff's department has vowed to make changes like enhancing mental health screenings during intake, adding more staff, improving medical response times, and using technology to check on inmates to make sure they're still alive. We do everything in our power to find the drugs. I want the fight to end at them saying they made a mistake as well that they allowed my brother to die. And the sheriff's department emailed us again earlier this week, reiterating their commitment to being transparent with the media and the community. The undersheriff also apologized for having us ask for these records multiple times only to keep getting denied. In the studio, Jennifer Kastner, ABC 10 News. Jennifer.